I'm always excited when Netflix drop a new anime, especially when it's original. This time around, it is original, but they're taking variations of the grim fairy tales and animating it up. And by what I mean by that is taking that story that we know so well, those stories, mostly, mostly. we know so well, and then twisting it on its head, giving it variations of stories that you've probably not seen before. If you have read the original Grim Tales, you'll know how much darker they are. So having that sort of th thought process in mind when you go into this is kind of what you might expect. It is an 18 here in the UK, so it's an adult anime for many reasons. Let's jump in. So there's six episodes of the Grim Variations, and I'm just going to talk about them with each episode because each episode is about 40 ish minutes depending on the episode first one is called cinderella and it's exactly what you think it is until it twists itself on the head now the animation styles very much like what you'd expect in cinderella almost a little bit steampunk in its drawing and it's stylized it's not steampunk but it gives that sort of vibe very ar aristocrat out of the six this is my least favorite it kind of takes the boxes of the story that you already know and i was really hoping that it was going to be so vastly different from the original that they wouldn't just stick to their aesthetic so even like the same location however i would say the voice acting is great in both the english and the original i swapped and changed just to check on that i thought the animation style is beautiful to look at and it's a very well presented in its 43 minutes running time in the way that it has a great beginning, middle and end. You kind of get that whole Cinderella storyline in here, but with those twists and turns. I don't want to talk about the spoilers. Suffice to say, I thought it was really interesting. Not particularly happy, but interesting. Not a way I expected it to go and definitely twist that point of view that you normally had as Cinderella, you know, getting that slipper, meeting the prince, all of that. It takes that story of those tried and tested editing beats for that that story and then like the upside down just goes whoop. So I thought it was a, it was a good start, but for me, I think they continue to get better with each episode. Next one is Little Red Riding Hood has a runtime of 37 minutes. Synopsis reads as the dystopian future, Gray and his club of wolves use AR to hunt and kill women for leisure until he meets his first real life prey scarlet so instead of there being a big bad wolf and red riding hood taking her grandma some uh bread and fruit and just visiting a grandmother like a good granddaughter should this time around it's that dystopian future and i really like this setting for it really taking that story of the red, little red riding hood and like giving it a brand new fresh look this is when i was going okay I know what you guys are doing now, taking those grim stories, making them very different. And instead we have like a wolf club. They hunt for the pleasure of blood because in the future, most people don't experience real, real things. They experience things in the cyber world. And so there are people that are so hungering for real life that their emotions and exotic wants end up being more serial killer ish and it's it's a pretty risque episode this is the reason why the series has an 18 because of the nudity the gore the violence the adult nature and content and theme of the episode but it was a great twist on it and even then from the normal story you know with a flip i think you should just expect that with everyone now, it's a little bit on the shorter side. I think we could have had some more padding for this episode, but all in all, I think because of that difference in the story, the location, the futuristic setting, who Red is, what the wolves are, all of that, I think, played a really interesting part in making this really fresh. And then the third episode is Hansel and Gretel. In the deepest, darkest part of the forest, Hansel and Gretel face a tough dilemma when an old woman tempts them with sweets and forbidden knowledge. This, again, it blew my expectations away of what I was expecting. You know the Hansel and Gretel story until you see this episode, and then it makes it existential about the, the sort of meaning of life, what humans might look like if we don't change the world or what we have coming to us and it reminds me of a few other anime and if I mentioned them one in particular with a bunch of kids at a school uh, I think it would ruin the surprise of what this is it's not nearly as violent as a as it could have been but it is tense in places and 
the mystery keeps you guessing and wanting to watch the episode as it goes along. For me, the animation for the first three episodes have been similar in aesthetic and colorized and voice work. And I think the way it's edited and pacing has been so far really good. Then we get to the elves and the shoemaker. This one hit me in my soul as a fellow writer. It's about a washed up writer who's been years since he's had his last successful book. And he's basically holed up in his room trying to spew out a few pages and send them to his editor to make something of his life. Because I think it's literally been 20 years since he was called a great writer. And then he meets a peculiar character one night when he's drunk on a bench. And that night he starts being able to write, but he can't remember being writing. And so we have this mystery again. It all takes that kind of the elves and the shoemaker storyline, but gives it a very different edge and a very different feeling. And this one feels like one of those Twilight Zone episodes where there's a moral of the story. It's one of those horror anthology episodes that you're like, oh yes, probably shouldn't have done that. Or you realize that maybe you should choose better for your morality or who you are as a person, shaping the way we think, which makes it fun. Very different from how it started to how it ended, but you could see it coming a mile long. That's not to say that you didn't enjoy this episode. Then we come to episode five, which is the shortest, the 32 minutes, the town musicians of Brenmen. Now, I actually don't know this grim story, this fairy tale, but for me, this is, was the freshest one, maybe because I didn't know it, but because of the setting, the aesthetics and the action we're getting here, this felt much more anime to me. Sort of the shonen, but with a, a really fun storyline. It's a Western anime episode, and those two things combined are just ticking all the right switches. When it comes to the action of this anime, it's showcased beautifully. You love the characters. There's a hero's journey here. There is what is a hero, and there is those that are standing up wrong classic western story but with that anime twist the synopsis reads former deputy dog roams the land with unlikely companions but their search for a home is interrupted when they run into the notorious wade brothers for me this is my favorite because of the style and the action that you get in this i highly recommend watching this one if you're going to watch any and the last episode 46 minutes long called pied piper of hamlin the sheltered and precious maria is content with her bleak village life until her obsessed teacher shows her an illicit picture from the outside Side world. This is one of those stories or films that we've seen a lot of time where you take a group of people that are sheltered for whatever reason, they don't take any influence from the outside and when something from that influence that comes from the outside makes you realize that there's something more to the world, then that's when things start to get interesting. Not sure how I felt about this one. There was a, a weird yucky feeling to this episode, mostly because it, yeah, you have this teacher that is obsessed with his student, but the student herself was like kind of deranged and a bit mental, kind of mimicking what was happening in Cinderella. A student here though, she knows and understands, is very intellectual, intelligent, but then makes these decisions that make her come across as unlikable. So although she is the protagonist and the end is about her escaping this particular life and finding out about what life has to offer, all of that is great. I just found it really hard to like her. I found it really hard to like any of the characters really in this episode. It was a weird one for me. So I would rank rank them as follows. I would go Cinderella at number six. I go Pied Piper at number five. Hansel and Gretel at number four. The Elves and the Shoemaker at number three. Little Red Riding Hood at number two. And The Town of Musicians of Brenmen at one. Let me know your ranking down below, which was your favorite. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna give this four Nicholas Cages out of five. <laughs> you got one. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long and Tuesday.